All right, guys, how's it going? In this video, we are going to be talking about Ruben Amarim. No surprises there. I thought today we might get a day off from it uh, because we've got a game tonight. Uh, even Pedro in Portugal hasn't been saying anything for a few hours at least. Uh, so it's been quiet so far. It's only the middle of the day. Anything can happen yet. We've got a game tonight. Yesterday was very quiet. Tonight we've got a game. Tomorrow it's usually discussing the previous game. So I thought we might have a bit of peace. But no, there is something that I, I feel that we need to touch on. Now, there's an article being published by a website called Sport Witness. It's a very, very, very good website. Um, a lot of the time in my content, my videos, podcasts, the members' website, I will say to you, don't pay attention to them. What a load of... You know what I mean? Like different things. And it, and it probably seems like I'm saying that all the time. So I like to balance it out. But it's very difficult to balance it out. And the majority of the stuff we see on here is shy. okay? So when there is something that we should uh, big up, if you like, we will do it. And Sport Witness is absolutely uh, a website that um, is worthy of recommendation. And what they do is they monitor various publications throughout Europe and the world, even non-English publications, and translate those articles and then collate the best bits into an English article for the likes of us to read. Very, very good website. And they're picking up on some things that have been said uh, in the Portuguese media, uh, and I'm just going to touch on that for you because I think it might be something that will interest you. Now, um, it's just been voted the uh, player, uh, the manager of the month, sorry, in Portugal for March. They're touching about that, touch on that. And then they explain, you know, uh, feature what they call um, Amarim's Midas Touch uh, because he's developed many players and turned them into profit for sporting. Now, you can see where I'm going with this, right? FSG like that, yeah? players with um, a resale value. Do you know what I mean? Like we can buy a player, improve him and then cash in right at the, the right moment, which is good business, but maybe not if you're a you know, supporter and all you care about is having the best players. A an example of that might be Mo Salah this, this summer. Might be, you just don't know. No reference to that in this article, of course. But we know that the club don't tend to buy players that have no potential resale value. Usually, usually, right? So he's, he's basically getting plays and turning them into profit. And it's pointed out that the valuation of Sporting's uh, squad has increased by 100 million euros this season alone. Obviously, they're doing really well in the league at the moment. The, the squad is valued uh, was valued at 229.9 million euros uh, and is now at 339.9 million euros. Uh, one of the players there has seen uh, an increase of 1,200% of his valuation. Um, from 600,000 euro to 8 million euros. Now, since arriving at Sporting in 2020, Amarim has developed multiple players who were sold for a higher price later. Uh, and there is a list of names which we don't need to go into. Um, Yeah, so, so right, so there's a, there's a, I'm not going to go through all the list of the names, we're not going to read all the article, um, but there is a, examples of players that he has, you know, developed and sold for a higher price than purchased, right? And there's oh, one, two, three, four, five examples of that. And then the, the, the article talks about the current squad, the current players, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, players, you know, that where their valuation has increased significantly and they're still there. Um, although at least two of those players, have, three of those players have been linked with Liverpool as potential uh, transfer targets for Liverpool if he comes in. The likes of Inacio, for example, who I think is going to be on our radar. Um, and I talked about this back in January of this year and also last year. Um, so we keep an eye on Inacio. And there are other players, you know the names, but we'll be here all day if we start talking about each of those. Um, and, and the article concludes by saying the list is huge and it's impressive, something that will certainly please Liverpool if they end up bringing Amarin to Anfield. So, who was the managerial candidate? Uh, Thiago Motta. Do you remember? I made a video about him recently and because uh, he's been name checked. Right, by the likes of Ornstein and Joyce, and I think it was Ornstein, it might be both, I can't remember, uh, at Bologna um, 
Fabrizio Romano. Take your earphones out. Are you ready? Mo Salah! Right, Fabrizio Romano uh, had, had mentioned recently um, how Bologna were just a few points off Juventus in Serie A, um, but had a fraction of the wage bill. Uh, Juventus first top spenders, if you like, on the wage bill in Serie A. Bologna 13th, yet they were just neck and neck, you know, a few points apart. Now that, when I saw that, when I discovered that, straight away I thought, now I can see why FSG have looked at that and Edwards and that, right? Because they like that kind of shit, yeah? You know, you can imagine John Henry going, hang on a minute, they've spent, what, 25% of what they've spent and they're more or less just a couple of points off in the league. So you can see why that would be an attraction and why, uh, you know, a data-driven consideration, right? Uh, not just it's not, not data driven. Obviously, it doesn't just mean about the results on the pitch. It, it's the big thing, right? And 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 rightly so. Uh, although many fans are probably not really bothered too much about the money. Um, so that was why Mossa came in, and we can see why he's considered. Uh, when you look at Amarim, until now I've not really seen anything like that mentioned. You know, we're just talking about how he's doing. Uh, in, you know, in terms of performance. Well, now there's that little bit of info there because I didn't know any of this about the players that he's worked his ma magic with and sold on. And the players that he's worked his magic on have got great value but are still there. Um, you know, now it could be a an alarming thing that, you know, you might be hearing this going, well, I don't like the sound of that dunk. But what you've got to understand is that it, whether we like it as not as passionate football supporters is that sometimes that's how it has to be. Because if you can sell a player every now and then and bring in two or three players, that's fine. It's fine if that money goes to the manager, right? You know, so I'm sure many of you have looked at certain sales over the years, like Coutinho, for example, didn't like it at the time or whatever. But in the long run, you might have gone, actually, that was all right because it funded this, that and the other. You know, so I don't really want to get into that. We obviously think differently. We think with our hearts rather than our heads as football supporters. But you can see now now another reason why the ownership might look at Amarim and go, oh, we like the sound of that. Yeah? So that's another plus for Amarim. And I, I will be absolutely stunned if we do not appoint Ruben Amarim as Liverpool manager. I will be stunned. I really will. I'm not bothered about the links with United and Chelsea and people like that. Nah. I, I, but I will be stunned. And... Yes, previously, we all thought, well, it looks like it's going to be Alonso, but it was always a but. But will he stay at Bayer Leverkusen for another year? But will he go to Bayern Munich? Not that I really thought that had happened. But um, could he lose out to Ruben Amarim because they're neck and neck, you know? Well, Ruben Amarim, I don't see anyone neck and neck with Ruben Amarim right now. They can tell you as much as they want. Oh, we're looking at everything, you know, everyone, no doubt. All right? Uh, but right now it's Ruben Amarim, I think. I don't even, even though like Nagelsmann, in my opinion, would get a look in. I don't think they're looking at him like they're looking at Ruben Amarim. Whereas when Alonso, I think then they were going. Mm, 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 mm. Do you know what I mean? Would you agree? See my point? Anyway, irrelevant. Uh, I'll be I'll be stunned. You never say never in football. We know that. Uh, but I think this is important information that you needed to know uh, because that's got FSG written all over them. All over it, you know, like uh, future resale value. All right, thought you might appreciate that. If you do appreciate that, please thumbs up this video. All right, and leave me a comment. Yeah, leave me a comment. It's been very quiet the last 24 hours, so uh, keep me company. Uh, you know, when I have a coffee, a coffee, and sit outside or whatever, uh, you know, I um, I read the comments, but it's been quiet. Uh, and if you want to buy me a coffee, hit the super thanks button. Please read the video description, join the newsletter, connect with me on social media, join the, the chat room. It's all the information is in the video description. And very, very important, if you currently support this channel by way of the YouTube membership or the podcast over at Patreon, I've uploaded a video prior to this one today, which you need to watch because I'm making some changes to make things easier and to hopefully provide more content to you guys. All right. Uh, I will hopefully speak to you later, drop some comments, and uh, and that's it. It's now, it's almost one o'clock, and I remember making a morning briefing today saying, I think I'm going to go out and, you know, have a coffee and, you know, maybe take my laptop out. It's not happened, you know what I mean? So, never mind. Anyway, I'll speak to you a bit, guys. All right.